Hi baldies or baldy baddies to be, I'm Gabrielle and I'm super excited you clicked over and all into my video. Today I'm going to be debunking all those baldy rumors and all concerns that you've been having to this point. So a lot of people always ask me, how did you have the confidence to do this at such a young age? One, I say, well, I, I don't know, like I, I don't really think of it as such a big thing because I've always had this desire to be bald. I got my first haircut in 2015 when I was a janitor at a public school at the Bronx during my lunch break. I was already into dyeing and exploration. I was one of those girls that really used my body as a canvas. So when I say I colored my hair, I learned how to sew weaves and do wigs and color it and bleach it and style it. I was just so inspired by art itself and just how art came about in many ways that at a very young age I was already into dyeing and exploration. In 2015, I knew I was going to cut my hair. Prior to 2015, I've been going back and forth with my mother about my own hair. A lot of people's family is like this, the older generation. They see hair as an extension of our beauty. And being from the Caribbean, a lot of our traditional values and beauty were in my eyes just messed up because even even with without here, I still am beautiful and I'm still myself. And I just remember just going through the questions of like, so are you lesbian? And so you like girls and you know, you know, this haircut is meant for women who like other women. And I never took offense to it because one, I cannot fault anyone for not knowing or not being open to something that is something very new to them. And I knew I knew that at a young age because the relationship with my mother and my father was very interesting. They were a different generation and I was a very like, I feel I was a very radical type of child. I did have a lot of hair damage and I did go through the transition of becoming natural in high school because I had a lot of perm damage and my mother perm my hair at a young age. I've been in dance since I was three. And the protocol was having your hair in a bun. And now that I think about it, and I always kind of was just like, but we're African American. Like my hair doesn't do the same thing as white people. Like we can force it, but we also have other styles that will protect me and my brothers and sisters from these whitewashed hairstyles every day. But I can't really say anything because I wasn't paying for my hair. All of that damage and then going into high school and having that availability to pay for my own hair, do my own hair. Because my mom was kind of like, You're, the weeds is expensive, so you do it your own self. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you kind of do it. And I was like, fine. I took it as a challenge and I figured out how to sew weeds. I'm like, I know how to do the technique to braiding hair, the different techniques into how you sew, under sewing, over sewing, leaving the um, part out. I know how to do it all, guys. And even when being natural wasn't the wave how it is now, like it's crazy how I used to do certain things like the Bantu knots and coming into class and I used to get made fun of. And now it's such an aesthetic. And I kind of wish, I think I still have pictures of this, but I kind of wish I recorded all of those things because fashion always come back around. But the things that people are doing now was so mind blowing back then to other people. Yeah, I decided, I knew in high school I wanted to cut my hair. And I've always had this crazy battle with my mother about my own hair. See, my grandmother, she was kind of the black sheep of my family. My family's from Belize and everyone is Spanish looking. And my grandmother is the complete opposite. 
and beautiful. When I mean complete opposite, I mean she's darker in complexion. She has more of a kinky hair. And she always had her hair a little shorter. I remember this time, I think she went to a barber shop and she was really upset about this because the dude cut her hair lower than what she expected. And I thought she looked marvelous. She didn't like it, but it was such an impact on me that I knew from right then and there, like, I just, I knew. Another major factor that happened in my life as to why I decided to cut my hair was I was at a performance, uh, a, do, a DRA, and I don't know if they still have it anymore, but it, it was for Dancers for the Arts for HIV and AIDS. And I remember this performance of this soloist and she was bald. She was dancing to Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. Like, like me, like just skin bald. And I've just never been moved by beauty, art, movement in such a way that she opened up for me. And I was introduced to short hair from my grandmother, but I was introduced to baldness from this performer. Opened my eyes to just the beauty of not having hair. Like, I've never been attached to my hair, and I believe that's why I've always been so fluent with doing with whatever with it. Okay, so in 2015, I decided to go to the barbershop in the Bronx. And he's like, so what you want? Because, you know, why, not a lot of women was going to the barbershop to get their hair cut. And so he said, okay, you want your hair cut? And I said, yes, I want it very low. He's like, okay. And I had a lot of hair back then. Back then, at that time, I had an afro. He cut my hair. I looked in the mirror. And I was like, no, cut more of it. Like, what are you doing? Like, don't leave the this. I don't want no fade. I don't want nothing of that. None of that. None of that. None of that. None of that. I want a buzz cut. And then shape me up. You feel me? Shape me up. And we'll be Gucci. The only regret I have on that day was shaping up the front of my head, which I, I would never recommend that to anyone. But if you want to do a little shape up or whatever, just to align it, go ahead, but don't fully shape it up. But he shaped up my front, my back, my side, everything. And even though I kind of looked like a boy in that moment, I loved my haircut. I felt so free, I felt the sun. But taking the bus back home, because I knew my dad was home, and I did not tell him, guys, that I was going to cut my hair. That was not in the plans. I don't do that. I was not that type of child. But this was something that I couldn't hide. I couldn't hide that I didn't have hair. And not only that I was scared to kind of face my my mother. See, the, the truth was there. My mother. But I was scared to face my father. Let me be honest. I kind of was like, I don't care what they think. But I was. I had to be prepared to what they was going to say and what my family was going to say and the criticism and the criticism that I was going to receive. So I come in the door and my dad looks at me. Dad, do you remember that day? He did not like it. He did not like my hair. Um, and he expressed that immediately, immediately. And I kind of was like, well, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I think he was coming from a, a place of like, I don't, like he grew up with beauty being attached with your hair, you know? So I, I couldn't be mad with him being concerned for me. However, I'm still gorgeous. Like, look at me. My mother... My mother was a different game. Like, I feel like my mother still hasn't come into terms with my hairstyle and it's been about eight years now. My mother used to tell me like, your hair is important for a woman. When I go back to the relationship between my hair and my mother, it makes me freaking cackle. Going back to the story, I, knew I wanted to cut my hair. And I knew already off rip that I was going to be the outcast and that the people around me wasn't going to understand. 
and they were judgmental. If you are a little skeptical about that or a little scared about having to go through that, um, judgment comes in any way you look and anything you do. So if you really want to cut your hair, baby, do what you want to do because you might be stopping yourself from relieving yourself from toxic past through your hair, you know, those connections. You might be not, you might be suffocating yourself, your true self from looking at your true self. So fuck everybody and do what you're going to do. But since I got to be censored and I said it and I love my dad, I'm going to say, do what you want. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you and the love that you generate inside of you. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I've been mistaken for a boy many times. And I don't take it to heart because at the end of the day, I know I'm not a man. And two, I dress androgynously all the time. I don't even know if that's the word, but if it's not, I hope you know what I'm saying. But if you don't know what androgynous is, it's someone who is in between the line of male and feminine energy. You really can't pinpoint their gender. They're kind of just like a fluid being, just dressing in cohesion of what they want. And I've always dressed like that. And I think it's interesting when you are bald, you're a boy, but when you are a certain aesthetic of a woman, such as light skin, you know, curly hair, you know, the fantasized tomboy woman, it's acceptable. So when I say it, it doesn't matter, because I know for a fact that um, I'm not a man. They were setting a piece on us and the room was full of people that I was extremely close with, like family, and you know, it is what it is, college. And so we're all in the room and there is specific people that he told to go out in the hallway. In the hallway, there's a glass so you can still see what they're doing. One of the people that was called was the same height, same color as me, and maybe the same physique as me as well. I'm inside the room because I wasn't called to be go outside in the hallway. I was just... I had to stay inside. So we're doing the choreography. We're all just in it. The, the teacher is teaching. He turns and he starts yelling, what are you doing back there? And we're all like, why is he tripping? He's like, Gabrielle, Gabrielle. And my friend, cause my friend, he mistaken me for, he was, I mean, they're all my friends. He turned around. And my good friend, I love my friend. No, he's funny. He was like, she's right here. Like, right next to him. I didn't say anything because, like, I was just like, you look kind of dumb. <laughs> You're yelling my name. And also, I got to look dumb, too. This was in a room full of 42 people. I was being mistaken for a full-blown man. That could have shattered me, but I didn't. I kind of just let it, I let it go. Because I cannot be upset with people who just sometimes do the dumb stuff, say the dumbest stuff, and who's also unaware of this decision, this lifestyle to be. Um, I'd be going back and forth. Because in my past, in my younger self, I've dealt with a lot of people telling me I wasn't beautiful and I had to look a certain way to be beautiful. So with my negatives, I whipped up this confidence and this sturdy like foundation in myself of just like, no matter what, I am beautiful. I truly feel unbeautiful if I don't get a facial or like if I see a blackhead. And... That's weird, but I do have insecurities, you know? So for example, when I was younger, one of my family members told me that my smile was so big that I would scare children. And I said, why would you say that? And they said, you have huge teeth. And 
it's crazy how I choose to be bald and my smile is my most heartwarming thing, I think, is attached to me. And that was the most hurtful thing I've ever heard in my entire life to this day. People always tell me your smile, your smile. And sometimes, you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. There are days when I look at my teeth and I'm like, Ugh. I know that I can have the things that has come, has become so uh, obtainable in our society as perfectionism and beauty. And I feel like but perfectionism is a beauty. Beauty is everything. Beauty is in the imperfections that I have. Like if I want to be a perfectional body and mint of myself I would not have freckles I would not be my height I would I would look completely different and I probably would have made completely different choices in my life that would have never gotten me here that would have never made me who I am today and my thoughts and my perspective and the way how I want to motivate people just to feel comfortable in whatever they do. It doesn't have to be about cutting your hair. Just feel comfortable. It doesn't have to be a trend. It doesn't have to be anything. If it's important to you, then it sure is goddamn important. So do it. Cold. Yes, I do get cold. My head gets ashy. I get dandruff. And when I say if you're gonna cut your hair, even to the shortest of a fade, get a hat, get a hat, Get a hat, get a hat. It's also important to keep your head covered in the sunniest of states. I almost died in Hawaii because I didn't have a hat on. Don't be like me. I almost died in Los Angeles and Samora Gasberg because I didn't have a head covering. The sun is beautiful, but it is very powerful if you don't have any protection up there. So yes, use your sunscreen, but that's not enough. Use a protection for your head. I decided to cut my own hair because I really got tired of being hitting on at barbershops. I have too many experiences with barbers trying to hit on me, saying some weird outlandish things to me. I don't want to flirt with you nor the people inside of the facility. So that is a major reason why I decided to cut my hair to conveniency. It is so much money to upkeep that two weeks haircut. If your hair grow faster than two weeks, baby, I only imagine what it is now because I go back and forth with my hair. I always, I think I'm going to stay bald this time, but I've always, I've always had the ability to grow my hair back. So I just grow my hair back spontaneously to cut color and, you know, do whatever. If you seen the Shady Brunch on the Shade Room, I was on that show. He said, y'all want the pineapple? <laughs> I will I'm give, give you <laughs> the pineapple. And I appreciate it. Oh, I was growing my hair out and I colored my hair and my hair was just like, oh, just messy. And I remember that my partner at the time's barber literally canceled on me that same day. So I had to... Find a barber in LA, which is so hard trying to find any stylist in LA. Like, it's so crazy how they be having their location that they be in LA, but nobody be working in LA. So this don't be making no type of sense. Because it's so hard to find a stylist in LA when y'all all working out there on Instagram and the goddamn post. Call time was at 8 a.m. and he canceled on me at like 7, 7.30. So it will have to be midnight, nighttime, dawn to get my hair cut. And I didn't feel comfortable with a man because do men make me feel comfortable? No. I was trying to look for a woman barber. They wasn't hitting me up. So I found a male barber and he was doing house calls. I had to get him into my house because I had to get my hair cut. That's the only reason why I had a man in my house. He gets there, it was like two o'clock in the morning. It was already weird. And he's coloring my hair. He's cu he's cutting my hair, guys. And he has me on Instagram. He's like, oh, I've seen you on Instagram. 
I see that you're a dancer. I said, okay, here we go. I said, yeah, I am. And he's like, so what type of dance that you do? You do like, like, do you dance like at the strip club? He said some place. And I'm like, what is that? And he's like, oh, like, you're not that type of dancer. I'm like, no, I'm on Broadway, baby. Oh, and nothing wrong with the girls in the club. But your perspective got to open because... Come on, yo. Ask me how it is on Broadway. And I actually like tell him about it because me being me, I'm a light worker. I'm going to have a good conversation. Then he reverts back to the flexibility of me. And I said, you know what? Just cut my hair and let it be. It hits me up to this day. Like, hey, you're back in LA. And I'm just like, you did a great haircut. But since you made me feel so uncomfortable, I can't even go back to you and that sucks because it's like it's hard finding a barber that you can trust and now the barber wants to flirt with you and you're like what the f it costs like my hair girl costs like a hundred dollars no it costs 300 no it costs like 200 no it costs like 300 dollars that night because he's doing a house cut no it was like 260 it was 260 even even do haircuts be costing like 75 dollars i'm like bro you are not even massaging my scalp or nothing you just shaving the shade some of y'all are incredible but a lot of y'all are really trash with the shape up i'm gonna be honest with you and i'm tired of lying to these barbers like i'm not even gonna hold you i'm glad i'm done doing the barber shops because i was this close to telling y'all y'all skills is trash this question that i received throughout my lifetime from people about my hair my decision and i'm just like y'all it's not that like it's not that crazy you know like i really just love look i felt like i was really gonna look good and felt like myself with no hair and i really fit this like i feel beautiful like you only see my face when you're bald it's it's you and when I have hair, I feel like I'm very covered and I'm very, um, I look like a child. That's one of the things I had to battle with, with being me with the short hair. A lot of people worry about looking like a boy, but I'm in a space where I'm worried about looking too young. I still battle with this to this day. And I'm like, that's a gem. People are literally using products to look younger and you are gifted with that gift of youth. And that's a blessing, right? Yes, of course. I don't know if any of other people is having that dilemma of I maybe may look more youthful but being looking youthful is okay. And don't feel like you have to look grown and sexy to attract. If that's what you're worried about, don't be worried about attraction, who will be attracted to you because you will attract the right people, I promise you. Only the elite can handle the baldies, baby, I promise. Hmm. So, if you are worried that you won't fit that baldy aesthetic. So I know that like I had this worry at one point of my season in life when the aesthetic of being bald was to be thick and dark skin or like really thick and like thick. <laughs> um, which is fine, okay? You know, y'all looking, y'all looking nice out there. But I'm so not that. I can be that, but right now, I'm not that. And for anyone who's worried about their weight being an aspect to their image, don't let that stop you from doing you. How you look is how you're meant to be look. And if you want something different, you can make that change now. Now. Meow. I use the forehead shaver, the pitbull skull shaver. I have a video up actually. I just got it and I'm really excited about it because it's giving me a really close cut. Some cons about being a baldy is the fact that my hair go out pretty fast and that stage of the hair growing in is very, very, very irritating and I'm still figuring that out. 
even with the things that I've been doing, if you cut your hair, people will be undeniably attracted to you. People will absolutely stare at you. People will be so cultivated with your beauty, they will stop. They will lock eyes with you. They will want to have a conversation with you. They will want to be in your energy. They will want to ask you questions. And so from one baldy to another or from one baldy to another person with a bomb ass haircut, I just wanna say, give them grace, give yourself grace. And I know we have to teach a lot of things in this world, but it doesn't hurt to just enlighten them on why you did it and how you feel. The story of confidence is what we need to spread, not the hatefulness and not the judgment. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. And if you want more content like this, just let me know. I really dig this community. And this community is not for just anyone who's just bald, but for anybody who just wants to feel great about themselves and just wants to hear a word about doing whatever the hell you want to do and feeling good. Because that's what it's all about. If you're not doing anything wrong, like hitting, killing, and all that crazy stuff that this world thinks is cute, do what you got to do. Feel good, look great, do great. That's all that matters. Love you.